not in this report. You are very smooth. Your acceptance, uh, not acceptance, but your um, remarks last night were amazing. You were so articulate. There was no teleprompter. So now that you're, you know, uh, we got the Mark momentum, as they call it, you know who's going to come out of you both guns blazing. His name starts with D, and his last name's name starts with T, and you're going to be right in the middle of the crosshairs for him now that you're giving him a run for his money. How are you going to handle Donald Trump's attacks on you? All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Malzberg's Media Madness. It's Thursday, so it's time for Tim Graham, Director of Media Research Center and editor of Newsbusters.org. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. All right, so we got a lot to get to here. Um, Dick Morris on our post uh, uh, election coverage was uh, probably the first one to talk about the fact that uh, it seems like Fox went way out of its way to prop up Marco Rubio. And to make it clear, I like personally, I like Marco Rubio, uh, but they didn't take him to task. Uh, they blamed Christie, not him, for the awkward answer he gave over and over again. And you just heard Megan Kelly, oh, you're so smooth, you're so eloquent, you're so wonderful. Um, do you agree with that, uh, that Fox is... Uh, had a bent for him and and why if you if you if that's the case I think that clip you showed is exactly the kind of thing we would do if we were trying to demonstrate a host being favorable toward a candidate I, I think it's awfully hard to watch that uh, question to Rubio and not say she is sympathizing and telling him he's great uh, I think the general pattern throughout this campaign is I think you get a sense that Fox News obviously has a long relationship with Trump. He's been that morning Fox and Friends phone call guy. Uh, you know, I think the first suspicion would be that Fox favors Trump. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, since I don't really, we don't really monitor tr Fox in the same way we monitor the other networks. Um, same with, same sure. with me, by the way. Same with me, because you want to see what the other side, quote unquote, is doing. So, I mean, I, I, I think they're all getting time. I don't think any of them are being, you know, uh, ruined by Fox. It's just, I think they, all the rival campaigns now are saying, where's my time? Where's my minutes? Everybody wants those minutes. So I know that Rubio will want those minutes. Ted Cruz will want his minutes. I don't think anybody worries that Donald Trump is going to get his minutes. Right. All right. And let me ask you one, one other uh, theory. Uh, Dick Morris had a piece at Newsmax uh, yesterday saying that uh, it's Rupert Murdoch uh, calling the shots uh, at Fox News, which, I mean, he's the ultimate boss, uh, and that he uh, is pushing Rubio. Uh, did you, have you heard anything about that? Do you see any evidence of that in what you have seen on Fox? I have no doubt that... Rupert Murdoch can have impact where he wants to, but I think a lot of times people, like look at the Wall Street Journal, I mean, people always want to presume that Rupert's going to muck it up and ruin it and make it non-journalistic, and I don't think we, we generally see that. I'm sure he has influence where he wants to have influence. I'm sure the suggestion there is, you know, Rupert, the Australian, is for Rubio, Mr. Amnesty, if you listen to the, the Trump Twitter guys I have in my feed. Right. Yeah, uh, that, that, that would, uh, that would uh, seem to make sense. All right, let, let's move on. Uh, I, I want to uh, put up a couple of uh, uh, media reactions to the New Hampshire uh, primary results on the Republican side. First up, I believe, is the New York Daily News, uh, that, that front page, Dawn of the Brain Dead. Clown comes back to life with New Hampshire win as mindless zombies turn out in droves. And, of course, the big picture of Trump as the uh, Joker from Batman. Uh, and then let's put up also the Huffington Post, uh, uh, which is next. New Hampshire goes racist, sexist, xenophobic with a picture of Trump. Um, I mean, take, take one at a time. Well, I mean, one of them is a, uh, you know, one of them is a notorious left-wing hack website. Um, I think that, you know, that's the Huffington Post. I mean, I, I, I would sort of expect that. They've had the, you know, they're the ones that had this whole, in every story, we're going to impose this block of text saying, by the way, in case you forgot, Donald Trump's a horrible racist, sexist person on everything that they do. So that's not shocking. But it is that whole pattern we've seen in the New York Daily News where they clearly made a business decision to be reckless and irresponsible and, you know, put cartoons and sound cartoony in their headlines and call Republicans terrorists and they just basically be... I mean, everything that a tabloid is, uh, you know, it's yellow journalism is what it is, you know. The New York Post looks very responsible. Usually, you know, <laughs> the liberals, 
always thought the New York Post was the irresponsible right. town in town. There is no question the New York Daily News is winning the race for stupid. <laughs> Very well put. Uh, I urge everyone to go to newsbusters.org and check out Tim's piece, uh, which we didn't have time to get to. Uh, Bill Maher loves Bernie Sanders, and he quotes uh, Bill Maher saying, we haven't seen a true leftist since F. D.R. Interesting. Ted Rawl, the cartoonist, I had him on yesterday, and he was uh, also in love with Bernie and said that, uh, you know, Hillary is uh, just a, a middle of the rotor and uh, it's about time. But anyway, Tim, always good to talk to you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you next week. Up next, Gimme Five, right here, straight ahead on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television.